This ride is a game changer. I can't remember the last time I got off a roller coaster more surprised than when I first rode Pipeline the Surf Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. This is a brand new prototype attraction from B&M, which they are calling the Surf Coaster. It was long rumored for this park, but we didn't know exactly what it was going to be until SeaWorld released this animation, where we saw it was a next generation stand-up coaster. And I think when this was announced, everyone was like, why on earth would you bring back one of the most hated roller coaster types ever made. Stand-up coasters have been getting removed the past couple years. Adding one is a bad idea. But the people at B&M knew what they were doing. They said, let's revitalize this concept and turn it into something great. It was an uphill battle. You gotta make people want to stand up on a roller coaster. So they said, well, let's mimic that feeling of surfing. Let's give the seat some bounce. And so now your seat is not locked in place. And that was the big selling point with this attraction. What I don't think people expected was that this was going to be an airtime machine in a way that we have never seen before. And I think that's why I was so caught off guard by this because I was too busy focusing on the fact that I don't like stand up coasters and that this layout, just in terms of pure elements, does not look that great. We're talking one inversion and lots of bank turns. First impressions when you're walking up to it, I mean, it looks pretty with like the track colors and everything, but it doesn't look like that exciting of a layout. I thought it was gonna be so boring and dumb. And let me tell you, I could not have been more wrong. I love this attraction and I hope that we see a lot more of these in the future. Much like how B&M was so innovative back in the day with the inverted coaster, the flying coaster, their first ever roller coaster was a stand-up coaster in the form of Iron Wolf, the B&M Hyper, the wing coaster, all of these really brilliant ideas. And now we can add the surf coaster to that list. But what makes this ride experience so fun? Let's get into some specifics with this ride vehicle. First of all, we're looking at two across instead of the usual four across trains that you get with B&M. That makes this the only two across B&M coaster in America. They removed the old over the shoulders with that design and replaced them with vests, which has its pros and cons. I'm gonna get to the cons later, but the big pro with this is that you don't get any of that head banging, which is absolutely awesome. When you climb aboard your seat and get yourself settled in place, the whole thing will move down and adjust to your height. That means when you stand up on your toes, the whole body and restraint will move up a little bit. Or if you crash down, the whole thing will lower. It's also a huge improvement for operations. Think about how bad the load times are for your usual stand-up coaster. That's because there's three things that they have to check. They have to pull down your over the shoulder, connect the seat belt, and lock in the height. Oh, and there's also twice as many people for each train. So yeah, it's gonna take a minute. With this, all you need to do is pull down a vest. So the operations on this thing are actually really fast. So that's an incredible design change. I know when we first strapped in for the first time, we're like bouncing up and down a little bit. We're like, whoa, this is weird. This is different. You roll out of the station, come to a stop, and then accelerate up to 60 miles per hour in what's actually a pretty good launch. And then you hit the first airtime hill, which is while you're accelerating and your whole seat shoots up to the top. That was something that I did not see coming. Your feet are literally lifted up off the board. That's why you see a lot of these photos where people are like kicking their feet up in the air. When I first saw that, I thought people were like making their own airtime, like doing that on their own. But that's a pretty natural body position to go into on some of these hills. You shoot over it and your whole legs just kind of flop up. And there are five different moments like that where your whole restraint lifts up to its maximum height. There's the airtime hill on the launch, the twisted hill after the overbank. You also rise up a little bit coming out of that overbank. But it's not as much. This twisted hill right here is by far the most sustained moment. Best part of the roller coaster, in my opinion. You also rise up a little bit, weirdly enough, during the second second half of that inversion, probably because that's where you're hitting zero G. The second best airtime moment is when you're rising up into this hill before you descend down into the spank turn. There's also this airtime pop right here. That one's great. And then there's a little pop right before you hit the brake run. That one's probably the most surprising because you don't expect it to happen when all you're doing is banking to the side. It's such a bizarre feeling. I genuinely can't think of another roller coaster that has anything like that. People ask me, they're like, how does Pipeline compare to other stand-up coasters? The answer is it doesn't. There's no other stand-up coaster that does what Pipeline can do. Now, here's what's kind of interesting. Your height will absolutely affect your ride experience. The taller you are, the less you're gonna be able to lift off the ground. I believe Pipeline has a maximum height requirement of six foot six. And I think that's because that's the maximum height of these restraints. We were talking to Tim Tracker, who's a pretty tall dude. And he said he only lifted up a little bit where he was just like on his tippy toes. It took several rides on Pipeline to really get a good feel for how these seats move. I think that first ride that I took on the roller coaster, I was just so in 
shock at what was going on, you know, rising up during the negatives, slamming back down during the positives. It's absolutely ejector airtime, which is something that you don't really get on B&M coasters. At this point in time, I've ran Pipeline over a dozen times. I tend to prefer the front. I think that the airtime is more pronounced. I also think when you're up front, you don't feel this one trim as much. It definitely dampens the airtime towards the rear of the train. But up front, it's not too bad. It's not a huge deal, but there's no bad spot on the train. I would recommend, though, riding on the front of each car. I think it's a bit smoother there. Pipeline definitely has a shake to it. That's one of the downsides with this attraction. It's more noticeable on those wheel seats. And there's an inherent problem that comes with doing a stand-up coaster. By nature, having riders positioned so far from the center of the track brings a more noticeable shake. It's the same problem with when you have wing coasters. The outer seats are going to be shakier because it's further from the track. That's why those inside seats are smoother. If Pipeline had sit-down seats, it'd probably be a glass smooth experience. But because those seats are so tall, up top, you can definitely see them kind of shimmering side to side. They're especially noticeable when you don't have a rider there. Once you put some weight in it, it's better. But the higher up you are, the more shake you get. But that's not the only problem that Pipeline has. I mentioned the vests earlier. They are very restrictive. It puts a lot of strain on your collarbones. It's not bad if you're just riding it once, but we did a social experiment. We just stayed in our spots for several rides in a row, and here's what we noticed. My collarbones started feeling it after about three consecutive rides, followed by my shoulder blades and back after about six or seven, just from being in that position as a result of these vests. You're like really tight up against the back, so you're like perfectly straight. Yes, you can push these vests forward and that might make it better, but it's not really comfortable or natural. I did not expect that to be the main point where my body would be like hurting per se. I thought it was gonna be, well, to be blunt, my nuts. But I can confidently say that this ride does not discriminate against gender. Dudes, you're gonna be just fine. Because you move with the restraint, it also includes that bar between your legs. So when you slam back down onto the board, you never hit that bar like you do on old stand-up coasters with that bicycle seat. Now, I wasn't the only one who was starting to feel something after multiple rides in a row. Sarah's calves started locking up at times. It actually got me worried about people's knees if they're not prepared for this experience. If your legs are perfectly straight on these negatives and then you land wrong when you're coming back down, I wonder if that could hurt like your ankles or something. I've also heard that this experience is uncomfortable for taller riders because when you rise up, your shoulders slam into the top when it's not moving. I think this is gonna be an experience that SeaWorld is definitely gonna be paying attention to, seeing the real effect that this has on riders. It seems like for the most part, they're good, but I'm wondering about like long-term, how is maintaining this thing gonna go? What will Pipeline ride like in a year? What about three or four or 10? It's a prototype experience, so by nature, not everything is gonna be perfect. B&M is gonna learn a lot from this ride. I'm sure they already have. And probably for the next one, we're gonna see some small changes made. We might not even notice a lot of them. They might be like completely internal behind the scenes things. But I absolutely hope that we see more of this in the future. And they don't all have to have the surfing theme. You could do like skateboarding or snowboarding. I saw someone even suggest moonwalking. I think that's kind of fun. The airtime moments are by far the best parts of Pipeline. I think it'd be cool to see a hyper style layout with these trains. Not necessarily like that tall, but you know, these big parabolic hills. What would that feel like? I think it's cool what they did here, bringing in like five distinct moments of airtime on this coaster. You know, I'd say that the first half of Pipeline is definitely better than the second half here. That's where the more standout moments are. During the second half, there's a lot of this kind of like riding the wave, going around some of these turns, which is fun, you know, and it, it looks great. I love that they're able to put an attraction that stretched along this section of the park that really just went unused for most of the year. So now it completes this full circle layout that you had with SeaWorld Orlando. It doesn't dead end anymore at that stadium. They really made this section of the park look great. It's not themed like super highly or anything, but aesthetically it's very pretty. This water feature is a lot of fun. If you're on the left side, when you go by, there's a chance that you might get missed it a little bit. I love that they used actual sand around this sign and theming the station to like a lifeguard stand is just so cool. And when you're riding on that surfboard, be sure to look down at your feet. You'll see that board has a lot of different Easter eggs for other rides in the park with like these sea creature designs. But to wrap things up, let's give Pipeline a final score. I think it absolutely deserves a nine out of 10 because what they managed to pull off with this attraction is so impressive. I can't give it a 10 though, just because they definitely have a couple things that they need to figure out, which I hope translates over to future rides because I absolutely 
absolutely think that there should be more of these. The stand-up coaster is back, guys, and it's better than ever. I think we're all wondering why B&M decided to come back with the next generation stand-up, but now I understand. They made the stand-up coaster enjoyable. They reinvented that ride experience. They took what worked and applied their previous knowledge with their other attractions and put it towards something new altogether. I think it's the sleeper hit of 2023, and I just want to say congratulations to B&M and SeaWorld, because you took someone who is so pessimistic about this edition and turn them into one of your biggest fans and supporters, which I think is a testament to how good this concept is. Never again will I use the phrase standing airtime with any other roller coaster other than Pipeline the Surf Coaster. So let me know down in the comments below if you've written Pipeline the Surf Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando, what you think of it. Do you agree with the points that I brought up? And of course, stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.